All right, so friends, welcome. We're playing the Pile Driver pre-release. What the hell is that? I'll tell you what that is. All right, the Pile Driver pre-release is a uh, event I run on my Discord. We do it once a set. It's free to play if you're a YouTube member or Twitch sub. Uh, so if you uh, are one of those, get in the Discord, come play. We have prizes from CoolStuffInc.com. It's sealed deck. Uh, not technically a pre-release because it's after release, but like everyone knows what a pre-release is. So we just call it that. And uh, here's my pool. And you can see here, uh, I've got some cool rares here. Double Cruel Claws. Mara, we got a Yurga Eater of All, so John Rare is looking kind of cool. A couple good white cards, a couple rabbits and stuff, and um, that's the pool. Let's look at our deck. So I tried really hard to get the uh, the Cruel Claws and the Mara Trash Tactician in and Splash Red, uh, but there's zero fixing in the entire pool. Not a lot of fixing in the set either. So we ended up with this deck here, just a solid green black deck. We got Yurga on top, and uh, a little bit of a bat sub theme with the Moonrise Clerics and the Harbingers play very well together, gaining life. And otherwise, some kill spells. And uh, I got a Stargaze on the top end for a little, little card draw. And uh, that's it. Kind of just like an average Steel deck. Steel a little hard this format because it's hard to get your synergies together. Uh, I think our deck is fine. Just being a reasonable uh, rate deck. So let's uh, do the thing. Four rounds. Best of three. Let's roll. As a reminder, the pre-release is brought to you by... CoolStuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of Jim Davis. And you can only find a bundle featuring his unique Karnstruct playmat and token here at Jim Davis HQ. Featuring artwork by Andre Garcia, this unique playmat features the whole Davis family, with a Karnstruct leading the way. Visit Jim Davis HQ at CoolStuffInc.com slash Jim, and remember to use promo code... Before we get started, um, this is really cool, honestly. You just saw the ad about it, but uh, cool stuff has made me a... Uh, landing page Jim Davis HQ uh, where they're going to be selling uh, merch for me which is really really cool uh, the Goblin Shaman token is available 5 bucks each cheaper than a regular Goblin Shaman token uh, if you're a Fable player and then the exciting one here of course you just saw is the uh, the new Karnstruck token with the whole family on there uh, playmat token 20 bucks really cool and if these go well we're going to sell uh, Bronze and Mythic playmat we're going to sell a uh, like a regular pile drivers like the ice Logo, Matt, play Matt. It's going to be really, really cool. So check it out. CoolStuffInc.com slash Jim. And of course, the promo code Jim5 still works on there awesome also. So uh, check it out. Support the content. Support it and give it a shot and uh, get some cool stuff. Inc.com. <laughs> Nailed it. All right. Round one of the Power Dark pre-release is against uh, Dark Elven Melvin. Dark Elven Melvin. Uh... And uh, we got Yurger Eater of All, best of three sealed deck. A little tough, actually. Uh, two lander here. We have the Cleric and the the Brawl, I guess. It seems like kind of hard to mulligan this card, this hand. It's not a great hand, but whatever. Chat, coming on me. Uh, yeah, we can keep this, I guess. It's not not very good. We might just say not draw land and die, but whatever. Draw Swamp Hand's good. We have a two drop. We have a fight. It's not a great fight. It's a two-one, but it's like possible. Uh, put a mulligans. We're dropping frames. Oh, great! That's good. Um. Great. So this is gonna be fight with optimum week. It's not that bad. I don't know why it would be an issue right now, honestly. Speed test wise. I don't know what's going on. Alright. We got a mulligan. We got a game. Let's go. Ravine Raider. You're as big as a small dinosaur. Alright, well. That's actually pretty good. It's the card we can brawl with. I like giving him a fish to kill one. It's not, not really that good. So, I right, hear Starscape Cleric. A bat. Now that's a new one. See a Haven on white attack for one. All right, that's cool. Uh, let's just cruel claws heist, right? We're gonna gift a card, try and steal a card. Let's do it. You ready to get a gift? We know where to send the gift basket. Gifted. All right, they draw. We see a hand of Consumed by Greed, Wax Wayne Witness, Nettle Guard, Feather of Flight, Feed the Cycle. So unfortunately, no bombs. Uh, consumed by Greed is pretty cool. It's honestly a way we can play Yurgra and then return it after they kill it. 
which is sweet. Um, the creatures are not that bad. Sure. I think it's consumed by greed. Take consumed and say go. No interest in fighting here, obviously. We got Polywallop, which can kill a thing. It's obviously not a great, uh, you know, not great in our deck because how many frogs, but it's obviously still a fine card. This card's like, eh, on four, good on three, very good on two, and insane on one. Intrepid Rabbit off the top. Not going to go for the Offspring. We draw three Tree Scribe. It is a frog for our uh, for our Polywop. Could go Scribe Brawl, give them a fish. I kind of like that, actually. So let's go Scribe. Going to give a, give a gift again. May I offer you a fish? To do this, put a counter. It fights. We attack. And now we have a pretty good board presence. We've got our removal spell. Removal spell in the chamber and a Yurgra. Yeah, weird little internet spike. I don't know what the deal is, but... Nux posted it in chat for you. Sorry about the delay. Alright, so we get Dread the removal spell, which is nice. Uh, so now Yurger might actually get in all the way here. We draw a Orator. So can't cast the Yurger yet. Uh, can't really block either. We even just have a freaking 2-2, though. Like, a 2 is kind of a house on this board. A couple 1-1s. One -ones. They have a Feather Flight, a Guard, a Witness. They play the Witness, we probably just kill it. Here's Waxwing Witness. And attack for one with the Menace Creature. We draw a Moonrise Cleric. Right, we're just going to kill this and attack. Uh, Cleric's great, but we'll just keep, keep, keep the board clear. So deal four to this. Send in the Clowns. And now it is 10 to 14. Still want to draw a land for Yurgra. Moonrise Cleric's a good one also. We're not 1 0, sorry. I apologize. I didn't reset them earlier. First round. My bad. Metal Guard is here. 3 1. Feather Flight on the Menace creature. It is now a 2 1 Flying Menace. Mildly annoying, but. We draw a land for Yurgra. Awesome. So, they got three unknown cards. If we play Yurgra and then attack with both, they kill this. They attack for a lot. So, do we want to be more conservative here, or. We have a removal spell in our hand and another thingy. Um, if I attack with both, they go to six. They untap, kill this. I guess, like, they're not just going to kill me. Eh, sure, stack, whatever. Any block grows the Yurgur. Everything, everything's a food now. It's a monster. So it's just ward sacrifice of food. It also makes everything a food. So it's just ward sack creature. Or food if you have one. So not not as busted as it sounds. One of those cards where like you gotta read the whole thing, you know, because the first line sounds great, but there's more to it. Alright, we got a trade. Awesome. So now, now I got a 10 10. So two foods die. This thing gets really big really fast, but it's zero evasion. So will they be able to kill it or not is the question. Even if they do, I can return it. And then I have a, a pretty good hand otherwise. So I actually have multiple ways to return it. All right, Surveil 2. Uh, lose 2 life. Tough thing to play when you're behind like this. We see a forest, so a couple more colors there. Breaking duo, sure. Looking like Yurga's pretty hungry, folks. We draw a cur Curious Forager. This can return a two mana permanent. Uh, we just forge back a two drop, right? Let's get back to the scribe. And leave the uh, the orator in there. Cool. So let's uh, attack. Five. 
Fish eats, the Jurger eats the fish probably. Take two. And then we'll just go forge or two drop and put things on the board. Playing the flyer to gains life is kind of nice because it gets to go with this thing too, but like we just want to play two things here if we can, so. Alright, so that's that. Gets even bigger. Let's forge. We're gonna for we can forge creatures, it's pretty funny. Can I forge their stuff? For some reason, it's showing me the animation to forge their things. That would be pretty cool. Not how it works, though. Uh, we're going to forage the heist, the brawl, and the instant. Then we're going to get back our creature. The scribe. And play that. And say go. We're looking pretty good here. Yeah. Basically, Yurg returns into the abyss really, really fast. Where once you block once or twice, it's now a 12 12. You have to, get, you have to play this block at every turn. And it gets bigger every turn after each block. So. Starwood Soothsayers here. Just a little uh, flying bat food. There are a lot of bats. And I think we're I think we're good to go here. We draw a land. So we have a removal spell and a uh, a moonrise cleric. Uh yeah. Just send it. It's funny, we could actually um could, like sack our all of our things to make them lose life, but whatever. That's not gonna really work either, so. Yeah, there, there comes a point where the stat line doesn't matter anymore. Uh, we're already at that point. 12 12 can just never die in combat. And then it also. Uh, it would kill him in one shot. So it's basically an infinite, infinite. So yeah, things die. Yurg was really, really, really big. It's now a 22 22. Oh Let's play Cleric and say go. I guess, like, maybe I could have not played that because we get Wrath. But, like, I have, like, an Orator and a Consume by Greed to return the creatures, so. Mouse Trapper. Obviously, he went back into his mouse hole. So... Gonna need a bigger mouse trap than that, my friend. You can't trap this guy. All right, that guy's pretty big. Uh, all right, so they are black, white. Again, the decks are obviously much less cohesive and sealed. Uh, so, like, you know, not necessarily all bats. Uh, I don't think I want anything here. It's fine. Just submit. Let it ride. As a reminder, you're watching the Pile Driver pre-release. We do this once every set. It is the Saturday after release at noon Eastern Standard. It's a lot of fun. It's free to play. Four rounds, sealed deck. Pretty, pretty casual. Pretty relaxed. Uh, we got prizes for every for people here, players who are undefeated. We also have prizes, a door prize every round. Cool stuff and gift cards. Biggest one being fifty dollars. So fifty dollars gift card is a pretty cool prize. And uh, come play. It's in the Discord. If you're a YouTube member, or Twitch sub, you're a Pile Driver. Join the Discord and come play and hang out. Sealed pools are generated by either uh, a moderator or you can just play a sealed event on Arena and submit that pool. So you already own the cards or you can wildcard them too. So that's the rest we're up to you right now. And uh, cool. All right, game two. What do we got? Real deal, Risa, thanks so much. All right, we got Saber, we got Yurger again. Snap key. Cool art. To the, the art really, like, exemplifies what this card is. It is a big calamity beast in a world of small creatures. It is the Predator, you know? Love the flavor of this card. Really, really cool. We draw, we draw a Cleric. This is five mana to Kicker. All right, we're going to Orator first. Kicker miss is pretty nice, so... Little squirrel. Don't care if it dies. Pay attention and stop looking at that squirrel. Oh no. Alright, we got a missed land drop here and a mulligan. That's obviously not great. Uh alright, attack. Play an order and say go. Wonder if there's a commander deck worth making here on Yurgra. Not my department, but probably. Finds a land, that's good. And uh we're looking pretty good here. These orators are honestly pretty good. Like, both of the two drops in the set that have, like, a four mana activated ability, like, you, you know, the, the usual two drop plus mana sync uh, are quite good. Four is a lot less. Usually they cost five to do a thing, and these, these only cost four. It's a lot less. Back in my day, it cost eight. Like the Stonewood Mutant whatever cards from uh, from Onslaught. All right, they play a three, two. Uh, that's Flash, just, you know, as a note, but... Um, we are more than happy trading here. So we're trying to jam. Just attack. No reason to use a removal spell. 
just gonna deal two. Play Root Weaver and then have a mana up also for Saber. And then we're gonna jam Yurger next turn probably. Psychic Whirl. This is a Mind Rot. Uh, okay. Pretty interesting spot, because we want to keep our threats. In theory, both our, our threats cost five. I'm sorry, this is the, this is the Mana Dork. Now, I thought this was the uh, the, the Frog, the 2-3 Frog. So yeah, uh, rest of that's fine. So we just got a land here. Definitely a land. It might just be Saber, too, honestly. Just keep our threats. Um. Yeah. I'm going to do that. And then is it Yurgra, or do we start off with a Cleric? We'll draw land, obviously. That sucks. Uh, okay. Because obviously there are exiling our removal spells, and these are all spells, because uh, they missed a land drop. I kind of like the Cleric first, honestly. Like, let's do this. He is exactly like you in every way, except one eighth your son. It's like three power in the air. If I gain life, I'm gonna do more damage. Try and draw out a removal spell. Put the Yurgra. Again, scared of exiling removal. Obviously, we have this thing to bring it back too. So, pretty good spot, I think. All right, we got a rabbit. Oh, well, hey, that, that's my kid. And uh, we got some pumps. Attack for three. All right. All right. Well, it's Yurger time. Is there a reason to uh, hold a land or play a land? I guess not really, right? Um, I want to play a land for this thing, so whatever. Just play it. Play a land. And here come the attacks. Boom, boom, boom. Everything's a food. Actually, we can tap. Actually, food's, food's tap to sack, so. All right. Well, Yurger has started eating already. Up to a 10-10. A lot of fodder in play, though. So if there's an Oblivion Ring here or a Banishing Light. Can sack a, sack a, a squirrel, a rabbit, get the Yurga out of here, but gotta beat the rest of the board too, so. And here's a parting gust. Gonna give me a card. Don't forget your gift bag. Or fish, I'm sorry. So I got a fish, Yurga's gone. That's what we were scared of, the exile removal, but still fine for us. Here's a Warren Elder. Alright, I mean, we've got no creatures in the bin for our orators. We've got a decent attack. Kind of sucks. I would love to, uh, like, trade something off. I should this too. Like, it's a free block, but like, it, yeah, this is awesome. We actually want this thing to die for these. So, cool. So, got him scared a little bit here. Kind of a hard spot to be scared. I think. Play this guy and say go. Can orator an orator, but like, eh, it's like not the most exciting. You know, it's just a six minute two two. All right, they'll play their own cleric. Not very good on defense. This card is, it's good when you're ahead, and if it's good if you're doing the thing, it's not great other uh, in the spots like this. Obviously, this thing has menace too. I think we're basically good here. We draw a moonstone harbinger, which doesn't really affect the board in any way. Uh, we're just gonna give this menace. I mean, they might not be dead here, but just gonna attack, whatever. Like, Menace plus Flyers is lethal, so if they have, if they have a trick, let me kill, kill some things, whatever, read these things too, so I think it's all fine. Double block here, that's fine. Uh, they take a bunch, they go down to a single life point, and where should they go? The player under Wrath, end step orator back creature. Is there a bean raider? And I think we're good. That missed, missed land drop really, really hurt for sure. Orator back. A cinder guy. And send it in. Beaten up by my own viewers. Stop, stop, 
He's beating up my own viewers here for for your entertainment, for other viewers' entertainment. It's like freaking. It's like a weird. It's like a weird gladiator thing. I'm like I'm like Russell 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 Crow, right? That's what it is. Are you not entertained? <laughs> All right, round two, playing against JJ Apps, Pile Driver pre-release. We got hybrid cards for days. All the hybrid cards. Uh, we're gonna keep. Outward on Steam. Is it on Switch? Alright, Swap Cup. Am I from the Big D? What? Huh? Excuse me? What'd you just say? Want me to look up the game Outward. Uh oh. Prince Charming here got himself turned It's frog time. Uh, sure. It's on Switch, too. It sounds cool. Alright. Obviously, this card's really, really good if your deck is really, really good. But, like, in Seal, it seems very, very hard to do. Alright, yeah, so... Play a Mentor. Gonna have to bounce it to the Elder. Which is, like, fine for us. We draw a freaking Heist on turn 3. It sucks. Alright, so... We're just gonna Cleric... And then we'll figure out how I want to play the next few turns. So I got to bounce the Mentor. This thing gets bigger, but like tempo-wise, it's kind of tough. So this card is like really, really good in Frogs. You're bouncing all the things you want to bounce. But like, you might not even play it on turn one sometimes. So, um, but here's the thing, folks. Welcome. It's Paladar pre-release. It's an event that I run every new set. Uh, four rounds pre-release. It's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm around two right now. Usually I don't get to play in it, but now I am. And uh, got to play it yourself. Info's in the chat. Otherwise, hi. Hi there. Hello. First time... Hit that follow button, support the content, like, comment, subscribe. My name is Jim, Pro Magic player, full time content creator, and uh, that's up. All right, so can we can see you're kind of stuck in like the the bouncing abyss, you know, where like just play mentor again and say go, and they're just gonna bounce it again. Like it's kind of kind of tough, but let's attack, gain a life. Just gonna cast the cutthroat, I think, and we're not in a rush to heist just yet, I don't think. So just say go. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, so that, that game sounds fun. For you two folks, chat was talking about this game called Outward. Uh, it's like a cool action RPG game. Sounds pretty cool. We were discussing uh, music and ambiance in games. because we, we had Diablo music on during the break. So, Mentor for the third time. The Bounce and Mentor. And then play a land. We got a kill spell here too. Taking out the trash. Code, you're great for Ambush the Reset. Thanks so much. All right, so this expands the raccoon, We're overrun with raccoons and but it's just going to bounce again. So, like, the Elder, not looking great in this game. I think we're getting close to wanting to heist, too. Draw, ooh, draw a cleric. That's kind of cool. Um, I think we're just a cleric. Cleric, kicker, attack, deal a bunch of damage, and then we'll set in for head of the homestead next turn, probably. I'm in. Oh, well, hey, that, that's my kid. I'm Batman. All right, here we go. And attack. This will deal four damage, and then you gain one. So bounce the mentor again. Can float mana, I guess, if you like have something to do with it. But it's a five-five. We can just jump block it later, though. We are like let, let, letting it get kind of big, but at the cost of their entire board, you know. Here's a mud flat village. Very interesting card. Really, really cool design. It's like a one-drop that gets kind of big. You don't necessarily want to play on turn one. It's a big build-around card where it's terrible in some decks, but great in some decks. It's cool. Yeah. Like, if they have somebody to give us trample or evasion, we're in trouble, but jump blocking, it seems like a very viable thing to do. We now have effectively four, five... We have effectively seven damage in the air. See, that's what you want to do with this card. You want to bounce a card like Sun Shower Druid. However, they did not play. Oh, they're, they're stuck on green. We get the har Oh my god, we're, we're doing the whole thing here. So the problem here is that we can Harbinger. And the Harbinger is insane with this setup because it pumps all the bats too. The problem is that, of course, we got to watch out for this mana up, right? So our goal is never to get blown out. If I play the Harbinger here and they have a removal spell, we lose the game. Not on a spot, but like almost. Whereas the Homestead just going to like make a bunch of blockers, jump block this thing, and so on and so forth. So let's just jam. Move to combat. Blood bats. 
That's frightening me. Frightening Leroy Bats. Gain a life. They lose some life. Hopefully they're stuck on, on, on no green here. That's the issue. It looks like it's the issue. All right, cool. And then we'll just farm head of Homestead. So head of Homestead, we'll just play, make, make a bunch of blockers. Bring out the rabbit. And, uh, yeah, let's just say go. So we are at eight. They have a seven power creature. They have some sort of trample effect we're going to lose, but whatever. It's fine. Is it? It is, you know? Um. Interesting, we just, like, we just like, never found time to cast this. It sucks if we had drawn on turn two, it would have been great. But we just never found time to cast it because we just need to keep playing creatures. That's a good lesson in just like, you just have to play to the board. You know, you just can't, like, it's so hard to play cards and don't play to the board in tight games like this, so. All right, so they're going to Wix Patrol. This is going to ETB and kill a thing. That's very bad for us. And they can bounce it and play it every turn for the rest of the game. All right. Uh, going to tap and draw Yurgra Eater of All. That is going to be ginormous. Uh, okay, let's play this and just jam. Yeah, I like this. We have two blockers for the Elder. They want to trade. Awesome. This thing gets freaking huge. All right. Getting hungry. The salted pork is particularly good. It doesn't reach, does it? No. Okay. Akar, you take your burger and leave, huh? You should take your burger and leave. All right, yeah, whatever, man. Sure. You know, I come to work today. It's fine, Karn. It's cool. Whatever. It's cool. Tax coming in. Climbing again and over here. Flavor of the set is that it's a world of a bajillion cute little creatures. There are some calamity beasts that are like really large predators. All right, make it the block. Down to five. Yurgra is now unbelievably bad. It's, it's funny how like. This card gets so big, the stats don't matter anymore. It might as well just be an infinite, infinite. You know, pretty fast, too, so. We got a wallop. We got dudes in the air. We got a thought seize. Can't necessarily do everything, but. All right, we got game one. Oh, shit, that's wrong button. I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot we're not playing best of one, but best of three. All right, so they're playing, uh, like, Jund. Looks like a, just kind of like a grindy gun deck. Definitely a very different sealed format than draft format. So obviously it's much more difficult to put together all your synergies in a sealed format. Uh, so the decks obviously are, you know, the, it's hard to make the frog things work and the bat things work and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I don't think I'm sideboarding here. I think it's just fine. Look who came crawling back. All right, Marsh Stalker, Cutthroat, Saver, Feed the Cycle, we can keep this. So we can go Marsh Stalker, try and get our Cutthroat going. This card's not great in our deck. I don't know if you have any of the rats, but like... Is there a rat? No. Maybe we have zero other rats, but like, it's a 3-1 for 2, whatever. You know, like... Hidden Grotto on turn 1. A little bit of fixing. Pretty excited for the next few days. So, for those who don't know, uh, Nicole, John, and Cassian left yesterday. They left last night to drive down to South Carolina. They are visiting family down there. They arrived about, actually, like, you know, about 10 minutes ago. And uh, I have the entire house to myself for the next nine days. And this is my last piece of content before I tear everything down. I'm going to be setting up my new computer. Uh, setting everything up, redoing everything. I'm very excited about it, but I'll be offline for all of next week. So keep an eye out for that. I'm very excited for it. So last stream. All right, so Marsh Stalker. We got Thought Stalker Warlock with no kicker. Still pretty good though, honestly. It's just a, you know, ETB, discard a card, Ravenous Rat, which is totally fine. Um... Stargaze will set up the Forager. I'm just going to discard the Cutthroat, I think. I want to keep the kill spells. I want to keep the card advantage. 
we're not really like a beatdown deck. Uh, so like, you know, we attack, they block, our cutthroat's terrible. I'm just gonna get cutthroat. That's fine. You're gone. Goodbye. Draw land, great. Uh, and then now, we can't forage yet. I'm just gonna savor this. Should have land, savor, attack. Because now we have a food to forage with. So we can forage next, forage next turn, or stargaze. It's not a great exchange, but like, we're up on cards. These are all going to get us back on cards also, so we should keep the board kind of nice and clear, I think. Chat likes the art on Grotto. I agree. It is really, really cool. It's a nice art. Oh, it's here for Fiona Heish. We're saying it wrong. Probably. It's Sorry. Leviosa. All right. We got a big one here. What's going on over here? Uh, four mana up. Four cards in hand. We did see a lot of red cards in game one. Might be mana screwed. Although there's a grotto here. But something a little amiss here. Uh, we're going to play a land. We're just going to start by jamming. Going to attack. And then... We could just stargaze. Like... Forge. We can't play, we, we, we could forge this guy back, but it's not very mana efficient. To play this thing, same problem. Um... Let me get on the board just better. Returning this guy's kind of fine. Let's do that. We'll just forge the uh, the food and get back creature. Drawing two is great, but like this card gets better as the game goes on anyway. Um, so like we can just wait on it. We're in no rush. We're also ahead on board too. So we got forge. Six power is a lot, you know. So let's forge up. Foraging and shit. And let's get back our dude. Very likely to be able to bloodthirst next turn also. So end step. Nothing. Wow. It's so unfair to have this card, you know? Alright, so this sucks a little bit, but we'll just two for one ourselves, I guess. We'll just feed the cycle and sacrifice. Hmm. Very awkward hand, right? We just have like three three and then a two and a two. Stargazing might have been more mana efficient last turn. Might find a little land drop too. Obviously, getting the board is very bad against a 6 6. We're going to sack one of these. Uh, in hindsight, I wish I cast Star Stargaze. Still think, still, 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 still think my, play, my play is correct. So. Alright, so we'll just murder this and sacrifice them thing and attack for three. Like, whatever. It's not great, but is what it is. So. Alright, so let's uh, pay a black. Kill this, I'm sure. Your versus two for one, it is what it is. It grows, and then it dies. And then we attack for three. And say go. We draw a lab, you can play a three drop and a two drop, that'd be nice. Alright. We are now in forage territory, also in our graveyard. That matters for a future thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. They're gonna mud flats back their things at a sorcery only. All right, so they didn't need to didn't need to main phase that obviously, but sure. They're gonna back and they're actually get back the warlock, not your girl. They got back the warlock. That's weird. Uh, sure. Now we're in a similar spot where we like can waste a mana or just play stargaze. They're at eleven. Man, we're gonna discard a card. Oh right, only returns bat, lizard, rat, or squirrel. Got it. My bad. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, the all the black uh, creature types. Check out this. This is almost lethal. So we discard one of these shitters. Probably the sticky tongue. I guess actually bouncing the forger is kind of cool. I'll discard the harbinger if they play this thing. We can get it for four. Can tongue back the the forager. We can stargaze. Love a draw land. We just bounce the forager and play the assassin. All right, so here's your warlock. Discard the harbinger. More forage food. Fountain port bell. Search for a land. Gonna get a mountain, I assume. This card's pretty cool. Forest, actually. Interesting. We draw Poly Wallop. Alright, so we're not going to trade uh, Forger for Warlock. 
So when I bounce it, you get some value off of it. She's going to attack for four. Didn't draw land, unfortunately. I think we're still going to Sticky Tongue, though. Just keep applying pressure on the board. It's kind of crabby, but it is what it is. We can bounce land with a Sentinel, but... I guess we could do that. We could bounce land with Sentinel, but the Assassin. That's fair. I didn't consider that. Um, I actually like that best. So if you, have, if you don't have a land drop, this thing can be can, can make a mana, which is kind of cool. There are four, which is freaking killed them, you know. You got a bunch of damage in play. Removal spell in hand. I'm just like never even going to cast this. Chat, help me beat up on chat. Four cards in hand, just put the land off the top. So whatever, we know they drew the land and not a card that's random, so they have the things they've had have access to for the last few turns. What do we got? <laughs> Every day you just don't want to go to work. That's Karn today. Sure, whatever Karn. The black season would suck. Uh, we have Stargaze, though. He'd probably rebuild, hopefully. All right. Sacrifice the bell and draw a card. Not only not going to work, but actually out there barking at the wind. Great. Let's hear it for Karn, huh? Gonna hunger, give me a food? Sure. Still dead on board, I think, right? All right, GG's. A little rough there on the mulligan and the missed land drop, but we'll uh, we'll take it. Gym two, pile drivers zero. Pile driving the pile drivers, 2-0 in the pre-release. Going into round number three, four rounds total. Hand is not great, but you can't mulligan with hand limited, I don't think so. Is it it is? Forest, sun shower druid. Alright, uh, sure. Getting froggy. Red, green. Okay. Alright, so we're just gonna, uh... Is it Orator or Scribe? I think it's Orator. Uh, I guess, like, Scribe has very little value in our deck. We never really use the ability on it. But like, we want the Orator to die. Uh, yeah, that's my scribe, whatever, sure. The card, it looks appealing, maybe they'll kill it. Or nothing, sure, that's fun. All right, so we got a rough shout duo. Step one, we chuck the raccoon in there. So if they expend four, we get the pump a creature. It's pretty good. Uh, just play Harbinger and say go. This card is like, we do actually have a, a strange amount of bat synergy, uh, but it's also fine as a one through dead touch, so just say go. We're definitely a trade stuff off kind of deck, I think, with our orators and stuff. We're a good, good grindy black green deck. Not super squirrely, honestly, but let's see what's up. Okay, land four. Any expending to do? Creature origin story. All right, that sounds good. The guard mouse. Counter on the duo and attack. So we're just gonna block here, right? Like we, uh, this is gonna have first strike. Maybe you can't block it anyway. This card's just pretty good in general. These cards also work well together, where the this can target this. So I think it's a pretty good block for us. Take one. Pretty happy with that. Uh, I should I should don't block. That was stupid. Uh, whatever. Um, I'm an idiot. My bad. Um, and now we just play orator and say go. Sure, we could just murder this thing, honestly. I mean, they're red-green, they might have bigger creatures, but next turn is going to be probably a cleric turn. Hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's see. Got to kick this next turn, and when I kick this next turn, I will be putting up zero defense. I think I just kill this. And then is there any protection spells? There's like a two mana 
Next spot. I'm gonna kill this right now. I think this is predicated on the fact that next turn I am tapping five mana and putting zero blockers in play. So I don't want to like play a two-two here. They play, they attack, palm play, big creature, ball ball. Exactly. So yeah. Okay. God. So smart and good looking over here. Uh, I guess it's better to kill that. But so I guess we 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 punted by not waiting. But like there are protection spells and stuff too. So like I don't know. Now they have his boar, which makes my stargaze a lot worse, and this a lot worse too. Uh, might be in trouble here. So we probably have to stargaze because we can't play cleric, and there's, 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 we're not on the offensive here. This is a purely offensive card. All right, we're gonna stargaze. X is three, and be pretty sad about it, honestly. But so these are all of our cards. So we find a Yurgra, so that's gonna go into our hand, obviously. And then we also find some Moonrise Clerics. We can go Yurger next turn. And then we can't go Cleric Cleric because of the extra black. But I have a Curator in my hand also. I'm going to Cleric Cleric. So Yurger is really good against uh, Red Green decks because it's just so hard, so big it's hard to kill. But that might not matter if we just die next turn. But we'll see. Stargate is not a great card. Seems a lot better in sealed than in, in draft for sure, but still pretty clunky. All right, take the five. The trample too. Does that trample? Charging monster sword eats your heart out. We might be in a spot where we're just playing Yurgro and, and just like blocking this thing, which kind of sucks. But all right, no hall tech. That, that's so good for us. Here's a fountain port bell. Is it gonna find a splash color, or is it just uh, gonna be a cantrip? Finds a forest. That, that can't be good. Whenever your opponent searches for a land on turn on their six land, you know you're gonna get bombed out pretty hard. Bushy bodyguard forage. All right. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of game where if that last card is good, we have no chance to win. So we have to have to assume it's not and just hope we uh, don't die. So here you go. Here's a Yurgra, eater of all. So you go. We're dead to anything good. I think we missed for... I mean, I guess we got pu like punished for the Fetus Cycle main phase. But, like, it's hard to know. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're super dead. All right, so... Oh, no! No! Whoops. Whoopsie. All right, so... I guess this ended up being kind of fine for them. Like, it obviously was a mistake. Because, uh... So, the sacrificing the food for the ward grows the Yurgra. Uh... But, can I, I, but I can't live without blocking anyway. So, that kind of sucks. Yeah. So, it, it, it's still the right play. This should have attacked too, I think. But, uh, so we kill this thing. Take three trample this way. Jeez. So, maybe I actually... No. Let's jump block here. So, we take... So, I want to kill this. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is still tough. We're probably still dead, but we'll see what happens. So, let's go to, go to two... Now they have a 4-2 and a 1-3, and that's it. We draw forest. I can play a decent number of things here. We can go Cleric and Vanguard. I mean, our blocks line up well. They have no tricks. Again, we're in a spot where, like, we're dead to anything, but whatever. <laughs> Clench! Hold on to your butts. That's a lot of nuts. Can't clench this long. It's not healthy. We get to untap. I feel decently good about things. Sticky Tongue Sentinel. I guess they can bounce the Druid. Could put a counter on the bodyguard, I guess. Just like, just whatever. I'll put a counter on the Sentinel, right? Sure, so they have a good 4-4 blocker for my flyer. Okay, the game just slowed down, which is really good for us, and we have a, an Orator and a Yurger in our graveyard. So, we draw a land. Uh, this costs 4, so we're 1 short of each doing it all at once. Uh, 3. We can't attack. Just play this and say go, right? Yeah. 
We're just gonna play Cleric and say go. End step, Orator, bring back Yurgro and go from there. Scrap him back into it. Or trying to, at least. Scary. Here comes the 4-4. Four -four. Am I wearing a green top? Nope, I'm wearing nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome to the stream. Happy to have you. Come here often. 4-4 four is coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope, just kidding. Tough spot. So close to finishing me off, but not quite there yet. Here's a raccoon rallier. Okay. So end step. Get back the eater of all. Untap. We draw land. So we can Yurgra, Orator, and have two mana up for a food sack, which is kind of cool. So we get to go Yurgra. This will give vigilance to my uh, this guy too. So I can attack with this thing. And then I have, these are all foods. They can stack to go Yurgra and Jack can stack to gain life. So let's stack with our four. Obviously I just want things to die, make this thing bigger, so. Flyers can't attack into the reach guy. Frogs have reach. All right. Play order here, say go. Can't stack order, unfortunately, it's summoning sick, but. Okay. The question, Raymond, is do we sack one of our creatures on the end step? There is a three damage spell that could kill us in response. I think we should have that. We have a lot of mana, so. So, play this for five. We'll have four left over. Kick this thing. I shall call him. Mini. And now the order can sack too. So, and now when, when I gain life, they also like triggers happens. So let's do this. So attack four, four. I think Yurger stays home. We do have two sacks available. We could sack two things and make it make it a ten ten. But even then, I think we're gonna chill. Or wait, one more turn to try and really get things going here. I think. Yeah. So we're gonna say go. I think plan B is to sack the order end step. Uh. And maybe one of the clerics to try and get us to a safe life total and grow the Yurgra. Uh, that's not good. I guess this is fine. So one of the weird things about the, the, the expend four cards that cost four is they can never trigger a turn you cast them because you've already expended four. So that's kind of cool. But definitely a source of damage, which is a, a big deal. You pay till I tell you don't have to pay no more. All right, gain some life. So then they lose life. I'm gonna sack one of these two. They can't attack anyway, and like we just want to be at a highlight total. I think our board's great. Grow Yurgra. Keep our our game going here. It's killing them too. So another land, Jesus. Alright, so what's Orator back? A. I guess a cleric. I could also just Yurgra. I mean, the thing is, they have, they have one free chump block in play, so, like, it's kind of, like, not ideal to attack. Uh, with Yurgra. This is Menace, too, right? So you need to be aware of, you know, dying is still a concern. We can't uh, expend. Our flyers don't really attack. Just chill. Whatever. Sure. Just get back the, uh... You lose life? Or, or gain life or lose life. Pump your bats. We actually have a lot of bats. I think get this guy back, actually. Go on, batty. I just took the call and get the bat. Play this thing. Just say go. And then next turn, you can just, like, sack a food that grows all the bats and drains for a bunch of damage and stuff. So, like... Actually, I'm sorry. We could just do this, too. We can do it right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I mean, this is even better. Even better than I thought it was. So this gives all of our bats death touch, too. 
So we should attack. Shit, yeah. So now we have all, these are all bats, they all have attacking stuff. We do triggers. That triggers the, this thing only triggers once a turn, but it once it turns on, it's really, really good. That goes off, that goes off, that goes off. Because you were the best of us. Getting batty. They block the cleric, it is death touch. Yeah, they're just dead. All right, that is uh, more food for your eater of all. It is nine to three. They're just about dead. They are one point short of dead right now. So they go. Definitely have drawn this card a lot. Not sad about it. Hmm. Go on. They're going to... Agate Assault my Harbinger, which I cannot sacrifice in response because it's summoning sick. It's also going to exile too. That's whatever. It happens. Pretty cute. Yeah, exile target artifacts and then just pack it up. Sure. All right. Cool. Yeah, game one. Sideboarding. Uh, they're just like red-green stuff. I don't think so. Sure. Game two. Beating up on my viewers. Saying sorry, viewers. This is my TV show. I'm going to show you who's boss. Come on, knock on my door. Raccoon Rallier is here. Sure. We're going to fire our assassin. This card's definitely worse than a draw. It just doesn't always find good attacks, unfortunately. Also, funny, Yurgo is not an artifact, so they couldn't, they couldn't remove it. That's hilarious. They're going to play Keen-Eyed Curator and get in. Sounds like a raccoon. All right. Or a possum imitating the behavior of a raccoon. That's pretty good. All right, yeah, whatever. Let's play Harbinger Attack. Death Touch is a pretty good blocker. Chip away. We got a double order next turn. We got a removal spell. It's fine. It's cool. Uh, is that 2K says, returning player here, I love the draft, but Arena seems expensive for everyday drafting. And the suggestions? Arena is not that bad. Like, you know, you as long as you can, like, you know, bat 500 or whatever, you can get your money back pretty easily. 2-2 two, two attacks into my 1-3? With death touch, too? Is there a first strike trick? Let's find out. I want to know. This is honestly a turn where, like, turn 4 is a big, a bad trick turn, usually. So they can't play a trick here. They can't play a four drop, which is great for us. So, all right, they got the brew. They gift me a fish, and it gets plus two plus oh, but it dies. So yeah, so that's a spot where like a lot of the tricks just like don't trade very well into a death toucher. It's funny that the curator is just really good against my orators. I might just kill this because like the the orators are gonna be blank with this card in play. Sure, just kill this. Take it out of here. Get off my Maybe should kill the last turn. I don't know. Yeah, arena arena's honestly pretty cheap drafting wise. Like, you have to like, you know, be winning a few games. I would definitely one of the things about arena oh crap. That card's really good. One of the things about arena drafting is I I definitely would not Yeah, we should, we should have max punished, obviously. Uh I definitely would not just dive in. I think that if you are concerned about the cost of arena drafts, I would definitely take the time to like do a little research, you know, check out uh, the untapped, you know, uh, the stats for the archetypes and the cards. Listen to a podcast or two, watch some content like me, Bronze Timothic, you know, but uh, do a little research first. Don't go in totally blind and give yourself a little bit of an edge. And it's as long as you can win like, you know, three to four matches a draft, you can mostly just break even and just draft forever, you know, like, so... Especially if you're a bronze, too. Like, the first few levels are, like, really easy. So, like, you know, getting through gold, you know, is, like, a couple drafts where your opponents are going to be pretty low caliber, so. And then also, drafting is the best way to build your collection by far. Like, 
by far. The, pro- the, the, the joke of Arena is all the limited players have infinite wild, wild cards that they have nothing to do with. And all the extracted players just like have no cards. No wild cards, nothing. Here comes a boar. Jeez. Man, some heavy hitters here. Um, I guess we're blocking. Feels bad, but we lose two things for the boar. If they have the plus one, plus three trick, it's really bad for us. Two, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this is fine, I guess. All right. We draw a Marsh Stalker. Oh, boy. We got some work to do. This card's pretty busted. Um, all right. Gotta play the Stalker. Are we playing the Cutthroat? I don't think so. Nothing good to return here either, like, but I want a 4-3 if possible. I'm just gonna show. We could, like, we could attack it both. They eat this, and it's actually got a 4-3. Seems pretty bad, though. Doesn't line up well. I guess, like, if they play on, play on their creature, it's kind of a thing, but... Eh, sure. You know, whatever. Screw it. Maybe this is wrong. I should obviously have done this before attacking, but... That's pretty good. Hesitant to risk the bomb rare, of course. All right, found the block. So here's our cutthroat. So they only have three cards in hand. You know, the menace on this might keep them home a little bit, maybe, because they have to. It's hard to block it. Uh, so like maybe they can uh, buy us a little more time, find some rares or Yurgur or whatever. Yurgur is definitely insane against red green because once it gets big, they just can never kill it. You know, red green lacks you know the actual like exile creature or whatever. Ugh. Right, so they assault and attack. Don't call me a raccoon. All right, that was an exile too. Jeez. All right, well we draw a cleric. It's pretty good. Pretty pretty good draw actually. This says reach, but. All right, I would happily trade, so we're going to... Uh, actually, I should need to leave back to block. I'm just going to go. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, no. <laughs> that car is messed up. Manifold Mouse. Double strike. This is now going to be a, a duo. Oh my god, man. Alright. Now they have a double strike 4-3. Only targets mice, thankfully, but this card's really good, yeah. So they got a couple good rares here. We've drawn Yurga every game. I can't, I can't really complain, so right, we're just dead here, I think. We're just probably going to game three. Yeah, that's probably going to do it. Um, not ideal. I'm just going to bring back my assassin and play some things. I need to play something here. And say go. Teapot Singer, expend. So I'm going to... Pump the mouse to give it trample. So yeah, yeah, we're just dead. All right, all right, game three. Got some good ones in there for sure. Um, does it change anything on our side? I don't think so. Honestly, it's fun. And all right. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, we're playing more. We have nine swamps in our deck. No, nine swamps. Two double black cards, though. Oh, man, this is rough. We do have a pretty good early creature, as far as, like, stats go. It's tough. Yeah, we, have, we have a mana dork, too. So we have ten black sources off the top. Off the top. We've got our... Uh, the Root Weaver. Hmm. 
Seth keeps Reed Mulligans. Yeah, just like pretty, pretty. Basically, if it's ever close, Seth, 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 Seth keeps and Reed Mulligans. Um, I'm going to keep. I'm going to have a little faith. I don't love it, but Polywop. That's a good draw. That's a really good draw. Ugh. That's a really good card, too. Draw a veteran? Alright. Um, that card's good. I was, like, fine polywop, polywop, polywop in this, but this card's good. Veteran's... I mean, Mentor's really, really good, but Veteran's great, so... We're overrun with raccoons and obese toddlers. Okay. Now I draw Swamp. There's a Teapot Singer. Jeez. That is not a Swamp. Alright. Well, things are getting worse. Uh, we're gonna kill this. And attack. There are 13. Wouldn't be sad drawing, like, Swamp Swamp. Probably. Here's the Curator again. Oh, man. Yeah. That does grow our scribe. That's cool. This is an exile effect. All right. Well, that might be it. Uh, Korgoth's going to be your new streamer. Going to have to replace me. Oh, my God. Deck is quite good. All right. Down to 12. <laughs> Guess Reeb was right. Yeah, it's a bummer. I get a mulligan, you know. Ah, whatever, you know. Like, obviously, you draw Swamp, you'd be like, oh, cool, you know. Could have mulligan. Obviously, drawing black, black card, black, black card, not exactly ideal. This is almost a black, black card too. So they're gonna eat. They got what do they got? Creature, instant, land, sorcery. Oh my god, we're just dead. That's pretty... All right, let's here for that. They even pulled off the Delirium on the Curator. That's pretty cool. Respect. They killed us on turn six. Sure, I have six on cast levels in my hand, but all right, GG, you got me. I've been felled. Felled by my own petard or whatever. Good games, my friend. All right, final round of the pre-release. Will I go 3-1 or will I go 2-2 against my viewers, right? That's, uh... I've been talking a lot of smack. We got our stuff here. All right, two-hander we're keeping. Assassin and Orator. Let's do our thing. Just tuning in. It's a Pile Diver pre-release. We do this every single set. It is a free event. If you're a subscriber or a YouTube member in the Discord, prizes galore. Uh, prizes for doing well. Door prizes. All get cool stuff. Gift cards. The round four door prize is a fifty dollars gift card to CoolStuffInc.com. Could be yours for free. Just play the event. We do it every Saturday after release. Obviously, too late to play in this one because I'm playing in it right now, but Dust Morn's coming up, folks. All right, check it out. But check on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe also. So we have two mulligans here. Jeez. What's up, Timmy? All right. Mulligan to five, but on the draw. And we got a Ravine Raider. Sure. Scribe or Orator or Assassin. All pretty interesting. All upsides and downsides. Um, I honestly kind of like the life gain of the Assassin the best. If We don't know if they're li lizards or not, right? Like, it's obviously sealed, not draft. So, like, the decks are no is cohesive. If they are aggressive, though, I'd rather deal two and gain one every turn. Then have one of these guys in play. This also blocks better on a later turn, too. So, let's play Assassin. We draw land, too. We have plenty of two drops here, though. Twos and threes. Alright. Black, red. Could be a lizard deck. And his name that, is was, that was the wrong button. A lizard, look. Like a lizard. That's what I was going for. Assassin is dead. Take it out the trash. That's fine. That was the... Not the worst of our three drops, but uh, we'll play Scriber. You could play Sentinel, but like 
we can bounce a Llama Sentinel and replay a two drop or something like that later. So play Scribe. Scribe's fun. All right, so coming in. Guaranteed damage is a big deal of this deck. Fountain port. That's good. Not as good when you are, of course, missing land drops, but uh, three tree scribes. So whenever you bounce another creature, leaves the battlefields. Okay. Um, obviously, bouncing our own land not very effective here because we can't cast anything with it. Might just be Orator and say go. Honestly, got to play some defense here. I think. Yeah. All right. I don't love it, but Rotten Reset. Thanks so much. Our hand's good. We want the game to go longer. Also, with this card in our hand, we want the game to go longer, too. So, And not lose life, if possible. Definitely not at its best against the, an aggro lizard's deck. Right, here's land. Take two. Here's a frilled spark shooter. So you can see these cards turning on all the lizard cards. This is a 4-4 four, four menace reach. We miss on land again. Jeez. All right. Um. Shit. Sentinel bouncing a thing will put a counter on the scribe. I can just bounce the two drop. If I draw a land, I can play ball two drops. That's like fine, I guess. A three four blocker and a four four. I can put a counter on the sentinel. It's got menace. I'm always like that. They attack us, it's hard to... And they have a trick, it's devastating. This is tough. So, planning out, if this thing attacks next turn, what am I going to do? Am I going to try and block it or not? What am I going to... Am I going to put myself in that kind of a risk? Doesn't really feel good either way. I'm just going to play this and say go. No, no bounce. Sorry, I'll, I'll bounce a land, actually. Let's say go. Alright. This land will return a creature. So they kind of want this thing to die. Alright, now nah, I'm just going to block, so... I'm going to block with all three. This is the best way to play around our removal spell. Uh, if they have the, the lizard plus two plus O oh, death touch instructable, we're going to lose the game on the spot. But I don't know if we can beat that. It's just, just like the one card that beats us, I think. So, sure. Apparently... Apparently, Miranda's, Miranda's in, the middle, in the middle of a storm and the lights are flickering. That's scary. All right, so had the removal spell. We still get the kill of a creature, which is good. So, good blocks, good blocks. Uh, we draw feed the cycle, which is not that useful right now. We can forage it, but, like, no good targets. So, just play this as I go. Just kind of holding on for dear life here. Holding on for life. They can return the spark shooter off the land. They draw a land, they can make it big again, but I have a kill spell, so. This card's really good. This is a really, really cool card. So turn the thing, draw. Am I hungry again? Man. Here comes the Raider. Would I trade Raider for a Marsh Stalker? I think I would, actually. Oh, wow. Getting for say, really want to get this damage in. All right, now you got me. Sure. Willing to, to throw away a lizard to, to get the counter on the spark shooter is so good for us. Because now I have a I can murder it, obviously. We draw a land. Cool. Um We're just gonna murder this. I mean, the only downside to waiting is to uh is them having a trick. But honestly, we might be able to draw out the trick with the thing. Obviously, like this is super sketchy to leave all his mana up, but Alright, so we're gonna block. Hmm. 
So, all right, let's do it. Yeah, we're gonna try and just set up a trap. The trap is laid. All right, they are not biting, so we're just gonna cast this this thing and kill this. We don't we don't actually want want this trade to happen. So, forage, exile these three, kill this. If they have the trick now, we'd lose again on the spot, but like I just think it's very, very unlikely. So did it, did it most of us didn't have it on, on prior turns. Another spark shooter. We draw the swamp. Okay. Now it's on. Here's Yurgrim. Eater of all. So freaking hungry. Okay, toes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. When all you got's a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Here's another lizard. But now I think we're, yeah, now we're stabilizing. Awesome. So, veteran stargaze cleric. Uh, is it time to start getting frisky at all? I don't know. Veteran's kind of cool. Stargaze is interesting. I'm just going to get the, the cleric into play, honestly. Just get cleric into play. And start gaining life in the air. Just got to chill. Okay. Uh, still not interested in sacking it yet. Thanks for that. We draw the the harbinger. It's pretty sick, actually. Sick. So here's Death Toucher, and now I can attack. And the bat gains a life. It pumps the bat. We do the thing. Get him for three. All right. Yurgra stabilizing here. This is a mulligan to five for our opponent too. Landfall. Take one. Down to twelve. And a bruiser. Spend four, take two. All right. Battling along here. So they draw a big spell next turn. It's really bad for us. All right. Let's tap. Draw a poly wallop. Poly wallop indeed. Um, hmm. Cleric's definitely getting in. There is reach. I'm sorry. There's reach here. Uh, it's probably just better anything about food. Let's say go. Let's say go. We're 10. It's not like ideal because there are multiple ways to deal damage to me directly, but... Stargaze looking kind of awkward here, obviously. I mean, if we gain some life, you know, maybe we can work it through, but... We do have food for days. We might just, like, sacrifice this Marsh Stalker end step, honestly, just gain some life. I'm just gonna do that. Like, just sack this, gain some life. We don't have... This random, like, 3-1 is just irrelevant in play, almost. I'll have the life. Gross the Urugra. This thing might be able to start attacking soon, also. Head a Homestead. Hell yeah, that's great. Okay. Let's just jam, then. Let's just do it. Let's fire in the, uh, just the Yurgra. Change my shirt, this is killing you. What are you talking about? Just living my life. All right. Oh my God! Take an eight, sure. All right, I think we're good. Expending. Tokens. Bring out the rabbit. And say go. These are all foods. So a lot of food to eat on. Yurgra loves munching on rabbits. They're freaking delicious. Tomatoes, sausages, nice crispy bacon. They draw some big rare and like expend, expend. It's like a little scary, but made a fish end step. Go to eight. It's also food. Fish apparently are food, not friends. And yeah, I mean, like, at this point, I might just want to like kill the sharpshooter and start getting it in the air too for guaranteed damage. Oh my god! So, a trick here that would expend and give this. Damn. Okay, hold on. Let's talk this one through. We have 13 life. A decent... There's actually a lot of menace in the board, too. 
All right. Uh, preliminary blocks. Here. 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 This has us taking three. Uh, with maybe a little... I'm sorry, this doesn't need, this doesn't need block here. This is, this is this. So, this gets pumped. It's six. I take three trample off this. Little, little, for little, uh, little guy can block this guy, I guess. So we're taking some trample. Minus reach. Yeah, this looks fine to me. Looks like a uh, Yurger is gonna be eating good in the neighborhood. I think. I think the plus two plus O is a sorcery, right? It's like a it's like a plus two plus O wish uh, gift card. I'm pretty sure it's a sorcery of a set. Can like gift a thing, give it first strike too. I think. Someone can someone quote me on that, but I think it's a sorcery. It's gonna be really really good if it was an instant. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, blockers are moved around. A rabid gnaw. That's pretty good. So this gets to uh, give this trample and kill the blocker. I am taking a lot here, but it's not lethal, I don't think. It is not lethal. Oh my god, so big! Just a casual uh, 26, 26. Make it, uh, make it 28. Make it 28! Oh that was a good game, honestly. Mir Miranda Mulligan to, uh, to 5 that game. Put up a hell of a fight, so... GG. Game two. What do we want to do here? Um, we're on the draw. I'm going to cut Stargaze. Cut Stargaze and add me a lookout. Just like a decent blocker. Helps the menace to have like random shitters in play too. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yurgra. Uh, no. Not the two lander again. Ugh. All right, we're gonna mulligan. We can't cast a spell. Ugh. All right, mulligan. Sure. Not very good, but we're gonna keep. All right, mountain go. No one drops nice for us. Playing this guy as a three-two is not nice, but probably where we're at. Here's a steam bath charger. We draw the land. All right, not cool. Need a little help here. Fountain port, no black though. Ugh, yeah, that's. I mean, the good news is it blocks itself, right? So as a three-two, we can like instead of like a four-three. I also want to give it menace, which would be fine with me, I think. Just coming in for two. This means uh, four drops coming up, obviously. Hope it's not that good. It's this guy again. Jeez. All right. Um. So our our heart of the homestead is gonna be great next turn. We're just gonna cleric and say go. I just hope we don't die. Basically, they're mono red, so Ugh. 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 hello darkness, my old friend. Both have menace too. Yeah. Um. If I take ten here, sure. Go to six. You draw saber. Saber's great, but not right now. All right. So let's play the homestead. This helps out against the menace a lot. Now we have valid blocks at least. Hopefully, no black either. So like. The spells might run out at some point here. Red again? Wow. Fountain port. Fountain port's not a swamp. Take a sip of my drink. Make a little noise here, huh? Come on, I can't hear you. Shit.
Go to one. All right. So that will not do it. I mean, we are technically not dead. We can savor this, then gain three life. This is it. This is a two mana gain five. <laughs> Ain't pretty. Bruiser. We're losing a mono red, folks. That was actually an insane draw. Uh, S Trample, though. Oh, man. If 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 tr if Trample or Menace wasn't a thing here, if we could block and then Death Touch kill a thing, that should have been insane. Um, but we can't stop the Trample and the Menace. All right, you got me. GG. Close one. Close game. Mono red. That's the secret. Just got a color from your deck. All right. Uh, now we're in the play for game three. And we're fine. We can maybe bring in the stride. So they have, they have damage based removal. Uh, maybe actually, you know what I'm gonna do? We're bringing in stride. We're gonna cut this uh, Starscape player because they're just too aggressive. They're just too defense. Just too, just too, off too offensive of a card. I want, I want a defensive card. All right, on the play. No, mono green. All right, Mulligan. No, Mono Black. Oh, I can't believe this. I'm gonna keep this. Keep this and dump the Root Weaver, and just try and drop Farst. The Polywop would have killed the creature last game, but we couldn't block the the Trampler or the Menace creature. We, we, could, only, we could only we could only stop, only block. We couldn't block either one of them successfully, so. We could kill one and either get trampled or uh, not block the menace. Here is the raider. We draw the green like a champion. So there you go. Still on with the lizard though. Yeah, reptiles. Reptiles with horns. Alright. Alright, the ball starts rolling. We got eight. Oh man, that's nice. Alright, so. I'm going to assume removal spell here, but neither of these are good targets. I'm going to look out and not attack. Just try and block, try and block this raider. Alright, so there you go. We got mulligans on both sides, yeah. Kindle Spark Duo. Well, that is certainly a way to, uh, to circumvent the combat step to trigger these things. I think we got to kill this. It's kind of sucky but like we're trying to keep them off of their like bloodthirst effects and this does that yeah we'll use the the if you're bull spell too all right sure we'll whop so let's kill this not thrilled about it but i'm just gonna say go We need to draw some gas here. Our deck is definitely, like, only okay. Like, the non yurga games will be a little harder, but... All right, here's a Charger. He is exactly like you in every way, except one-eighth your size. Play Harbinger, just say go. Got a murder up, but we need some, like, things to do. We're only, like, really doing a lot yet, you know? All right, here is a Teapot Singer. One card left. So expending like once they spend the mana, it just it just happens. Uh, do I want to wait or kill this? All right, need need something good here. Hey, another orator. All right. Uh, All right, say go. One card left, but a fountain port, which can do some work here. Uh, Sack a token, draw a card. Coming in. This thing can pump three times.
This seems fine, right? Um, any pumps, not a fountain port activation, too, which is, like, pretty cool, too. It pumps once and kills. It's fine, so yes, yeah, it's fine. All right. What do you got? Yurger off the top, please. All right, so we're going to see Fountain Port, draw a card, sack the thing, and then we'll see the, the rare trade with the... Uh, very good trade for us, obviously. We draw another freaking land. All right, not cool. Uh... Sure. Attack like this. Try to get some damage in. We need to draw some boomers, but we got a ways to go here. No ultimate guard code, unfortunately. Fell my creature, sure. I mean, we get back anyway, so... The problem is now we're probably going to see the, 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 the hill giant come down as a 4-4, which sucks. We've been trying to, we've been trying to avoid that all game. But, whatever. Yep, there's a sharpshooter, as planned. Alright, so that's fine. We are trying really hard to avoid that all game. It isn't the end of the world now, but we're, like, set up, so... Alright, so we draw Moonrise Cleric. That's a good draw. Cleric. Harbinger. And, there you go. For some reason, this freaking lizard is Reach. I don't know why. We draw High Stride. Okay. Um, I mean, that would allow the Harbinger to attack, which is, like, kind of a sketchy attack, honestly, but Menace and Reach, sure. Well, I guess he's both to attack, right? Oh, yeah, it does, that touch. I'm an idiot. I'm dumb. They're giant vampire bats. Forgot my cards did. They have text on them. Oh, no. Oh, no. The High Stride. High stepping into the end zone. All right, we're looking pretty good here now, folks. We got the combo of the cleric and the harbinger. We got two of each in our deck. We're a squirrel bat deck. Don't touch that squirrel's nuts. All right, it's a sack this and draw a card. Good late game card. Obviously, if you're flood of this is the card you want to have, but might be time to just turn it on, turn it up. I say it first, I I mean, drawing lands is not good for either one of us, I guess, but our board is good, so. In for a chunk. Say go. Try to close it out. And here they come. All right, so got to assume this, this is a, an attack that wants a uh, a damage trigger to happen. We can't stop it anyway because of a charger. So maybe just double block the collector. Just try and kill it for sure. If there's a trick here, like these huge creatures are super expendable, so whatever. All right, it was a scale, so that's a pretty good trick. So, kill both my guys, gain four. Nothing worth returning yet, which is fine. It is 16 to 12. It's a pretty big swing. Untap and draw another land. Not cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as we're, like, racing here, this is, like, fine, right? Oh, my God. All right. I guess we have the Orator, but... Alright, so now Harbinger stays home. Yeah, no attacks. Alright, just bring this thing back and cast it again. This card's been so good. The freaking Orator. Such a good little card. Actually, it's sealed. Try and take out the trash. This, uh, this fountain board's still working, too. Draws a card every other turn. All right, draw a card. Raider. Cutthroat. All right, draw a spell. Spells are good. I like spells.
skills. Alright, so gain of life. Attack for five. Lethal in the air. Your turn. It's been a hell of a match. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. With the pumps. The Vine Lasher! It's great, but it's too late. What a game. Take all of it. We don't we, we even know what our safe blocks here are too, so. Uh yeah, it's fine. I guess like this is a mistake. Because Fountain Port Saka Token could actually just draw a trick here. Alright, sure. Oh, it shouldn't have blocked at all, honestly. We have a guaranteed lethal in the air. All right, GG's. GG's, three and one in the old Pile Driver pre release. All right, so there you have it. Three and one in the pre release. Big ups to, uh, to Grand Moth Tarkin for taking me down. Uh, so, uh, my loss in the pre release. Couldn't beat up on all my viewers, but that was pretty good. Uh, pretty reliant on your, honestly. Not a lot of other great things going on. A little bit of recursion at the cleric and stuff. On uh, the you know the orator cleric and the the two clerics two harbingers helped a lot a lot too, uh, but yeah it was you know it was all right so again folks if you're watching this you're watching on YouTube you want to play in these join the pile drivers five bucks a month YouTube membership and uh, access to the Discord you get a holiday card every year with a signed token free events with prizes we do poker night once a month pre rolls every set commander night once a month all free to play all with with gift card prizes and cool stuff fifty dollar gift cards and stuff. We do uh, fantasy hockey, fantasy football, uh, lots of fun stuff. So if you're not a pile driver, join the pile drivers, check out the pre-release and other events, and hope to see you in the Discord. And uh, you're offering great Twitch subs, same thing. Twitch sub, YouTube member. Once you make, join, make, join your sub or membership, just make sure you link, go into your Discord, integrations, settings slash integrations, and just link whatever account you are subbed on, whether it's YouTube or Twitch, uh, with Discord. Once they talk and they get in the cahoots or whatever, uh, the server worlds pop up. So, there you go. And also, congrats to Top Hat Matt, our back-to-back -back Pile Driver pre-release champion. See you here for Top Hat Matt. Fantastic. YouTube folks, love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.